And I'm like, what's going on? Why, why are Christians not supporting this stuff? There's some quality, quality books out there. And I don't know. I, I, Christians just don't want to support it for one reason or another. And it blows my mind. I can't really fault a non-Christian company for not having a Christian's best interest at heart. So people right. will go to outrage about these things and, oh, they're just making everything gay and everything woke and there's no, like, they're taking God out of it. And I'm just like, well, over here, you that like, I compiled an entire 37 set of comics, not just running from all over. That to me is solid song edification. And I'm like, well, you see, I don't really have the $5 to really put in to that. And I'm just like, fam. <laughs> Then stop complaining. You, you have no right to complain if you don't want to be a and part of the solution. So this is the seventh installment of the Kiddushim Initiative podcast. And this is, for me personally, a long-awaited episode of our first interview with a Christian creative, Bill Roop of The Remnant and leader and creator of Grok Comics and The Remnant comic book series. Bill, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm glad that we finally get a chance to talk. Yeah, because it's been been covering the comics for a year, and this the remnant comics series was what made me like to shift the entire channel's direction into covering Christian fiction. Because I say it a lot in the remnant comics. For me personally, the remnant see the way you handle the remnant for me is like the best example and it's just the best example of as evan david says gospel infused fiction at a wide scale like i think you guys are at 24 issues or something like that no yeah a little more and uh, i think we're at like one including like pinup specials and all that kind of stuff we've been churning them out yeah, you guys been putting out comics at a at a wild rate recently because just I started my covering, put it on my content kit and took bounce back and said, oh, there's five comics, all right. I will cover it between January and February. And then when I'm done covering it, I all of a sudden started to see, oh, wait, Remnant 4 is out. Dog and the, Revel Dog and the Regulators are out. Swords of the Remnant is coming out. <laughs> Yeah, we got a, a a pretty impressive amount of things, kind of, you know, a lot of fires in the, was it irons in the fire right now? It's been, and my pocketbook is uh, suffering because of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, but we're gonna talk about all of that tonight in this installment of the podcast. So the very first question that I have for you, Will, is which is one of the things is even last night on our. The live stream continuing the development of the parables of the remnant issue four inspired game is what is your source of inspiration behind the remnant? Because a lot like last night, uh, someone asked a question on what is my view or take on um fantasy in general as a Christian. Because some people have the perspective of the channel at times that my view is that all fantasy bad and owning a tv is demonic or because of like my old christian breakdown videos of some marvel comics and things before the notion that well i'm against fantasy completely and last night we were discussing on the live stream that for me personally it's all about source implementation and motivation a lot of fiction is based off of a lot of fiction has uh, a source either a so it has a source there's a, always a source behind the source material very rarely is a fictional story completely like made up like someone was sitting down and like everything that they thought about never existed before that is very rare a lot of like most nine uh, 
I'm safe to say that probably 99.9% of all fiction has a source behind it. And we know that as right. Christians, that there is spiritual sources, there's physical sources. And there's a lot of things out there where authors directly state that, you know, my source for this thing is... Uh, is like i like i used the use the example yesterday of grant morrison and alan moore fantastic writers they are some of like some of the best of the world but those guys are like are professional cultists and uh, right at first people thought it was like oh they're just being edgy like going counterculture to the satanic panic and then now in the 2010s the two vowed that whatever back and forth and citing that oh my chaos magic is more powerful than that one's chaos magic and alan more straight out like well he's left the comic book industry and cites his um his snake puppet roman god glycon and even has like a bunch of um things out there saying stuff like monotheism like the belief in one god is where like religion started to go haywire and all those kind of stuff and both of them directly quote their use of a uh, chaos magic and stuff to help them with their panels and for some people so she non-christians would see that and think oh they're just being weird and trippy but for me personally as a christian that's like oh no you deal you dealing with something this isn't just this isn't just purely fiction like you you have a source behind your behind the source material that you're putting on these comics and for me it was like i got tired of hearing those kind of things and then seeing direct comic panels where it's like quoting the bible with the intent of being as quote-unquote edgy and atheistic as possible right. and recanting god and for me i came into 2023 with the just notion of i'm tired of like seeing all of these things in recent marvel comics god i want to like elevate christian creators the christian creatives or christian as i've been david say i love that term gospel infused yeah entertainment that is not cheesy that is not hockey that isn't trying to like i don't want to like sit down and be preached that with my entertainment i want edifying stories that i don't have to worry about well right. uh, this person coming from this perspective of i serve my like inserting all kind of stuff is like i have a uh, higher than most conviction and then randomly i came across the remnant and the first time i saw the remnant uh, image of the remnant in google i was like what come on i just came out of doing breakdowns on axe judgment day where kyron gillen like kyron gillen straight out said that that was meant to is like the most quote-unquote catholic crossover and was pulling bible verses and all kind of stuff into the comic panels so i saw the remnant and i was like what in the world is this with this guy in this red suit walking like this christian warrior whatnot walking alongside these others what what madness is this let me put this on the list and then go and like probably use it as a a point in another one of my um like fiction breakdown kind of videos but then when i went on the remnant website and actually started to look at what the remnant was about i was like okay is this actually like is bill rob actually a chris is this like an actual christian comic or is this just one of those bait and switch kind of stuff and then from review like we're 25 the 25 issues into reviewing the remnant so now sitting down with you bill first question as i just went on about um source of inspiration what was your source of inspiration behind the remnant well when i was growing up um i, I was surrounded by kind of christian things and they all sucked. So Christian comics were just notoriously bad. Anything with the label Christian attached to it was usually pretty terrible. From music on to everything. So as I got older, there was a series called Archangels. And it was like the first Christian branded thing that actually looked appealing. I was like, okay. So as I got older, you know, I, I had all these characters and I was working a really dead-end job for a little while when I was between social work jobs. And I just started sketching as I was listening to people call and complain about their health insurance. And I started putting them online. And someone said, oh, your characters are kind of cool. I was like, really? So I had this pitch that I had done 
to Rob Liefeld years ago for his extreme universe where, you know, he has this uh, character called Prophet. And the first issue had a lot of Bible verses and it was really cool. And then in one issue, he died. So my pitch was, what if when he supposedly dies, he meets God, God says, you're doing a terrible job of representing me and sends him back and then would draw the lines in that universe between people who are good and people who are not. So you might have some heroes who do magic and that occult stuff. Well, they would be not branded the heroes anymore. So he was going to go on this mission to tell what a hero really is. Well, that didn't happen. So what I decided is I said, let me take that pitch and, and do what I know. And that's do a Christian comic and make sure it's good. So went through, I kind of worked the concepts out. And then I remember a verse in um in John where Jesus is walking with John and the other disciples are behind him and they're kind of jealous that God's spending this time, you know, Jesus is spending this time with John and Jesus says to them, you know, what if I'd have it that John doesn't die until I return? And then the next verse says, of course that didn't happen, whatever, whatever. But I said, what if I just captured that line there and made John a superhero? Because Maybe he's still alive. And that's where the, the idea came from, basically, is that one little verse in the book of John. That is that's awesome to hear. Because that was one of the things, especially when those are the things, especially when I was like first surveying and doing just like surveying the remnant summaries and stuff, or like seeing that, oh, by the way, this guy is um John the Apostle and he's leading the superhero team. It was like a what moment for me. <laughs> Especially when I tried to relate to my um at the time I had theological advisors over the channel who when I was doing uh -huh. those um like Marvel breakdown videos, actually when they were using scriptures, like the crazy thing about those videos and seeing how scriptures were used is that they were using it perfectly out of context, in context, the way that right. like even false preachers stumble to do. Because it's like you go right. to what the source of the scripture they're using and it's in context, it's like in context to a certain extent, but then they go like so far-fetched off of it. So when I saw well, it was like, John walking in with them. Mm -hmm. Like in Young Justice, they had a, uh, what is it, Zatara? Was uh, yeah. a, a, a Christian and he's using magic and I'm like, whoa. Dude, I <laughs> was like... This? And people will accept that, but when they saw the remnant, automatically people were just like, "No, it's terrible." Before they even, all they had to do was see the logo. It was called Tribulation Task Force at that time. As soon as they saw the logo, they immediately dismissed it. So the biggest hurdle we had was, well, I said I'm going to change the title, and I like the remnant better, and it didn't have a cross in the logo, so at least. People would give it a, a try before they automatically said, nope, that's Christian garbage. I'm not going to try that. Yeah. No, I 100% get that. Because that's even with, um, even with like how I package the videos, sometimes like, well, I call it Christian Justice League just to like egg on and see to get um, a sort of like hit the YouTube algorithm. Because what I started to realize, especially with the channel, was that there were people looking for these Christian, like they're like Christian people that just around randomly type in Christian superhero or whenever a movie comes out and it is some form of um like Christian backlash towards it, like Thor, um Thor the last Thor, Thor Love and Thunder, or Wakanda Forever, something like that. Literally in my search results, there were terms like a a hundred hundreds of a hundred or so views will come from people who literally search the name of anything with the word Christian attached it. Because it's like, they're looking for something. They don't know what they're looking for, but they know what they're looking for at the same time. Right, and then the right. videos used to start ranking with that. So then I was like, what if like, if I'm reading the reference issue of the run, I'm like, I'm trying to get, elevate these Christian creatives. And I understand the perspective of when you guys say that you are like the Christian Justice League or... In the way how Evan David says his character is based off of um 
like Black Blossom and Venom. And then they'll put in that in um like marketing material at times pisses people off and they're like, oh, you guys just copying <laughs> these characters and stuff like that. So I'm like, here, I would be the trailblazer for you guys. I would like, I would say what you guys can't say as the creators. Like you guys, if you guys say, oh, the Christian Justice League, people would automatically stamp it as this is nonsense. But ever since I'm a third party right. and I label it as the Christian Justice League just took down the Antichrist. It would like people would get the intrigue and go into it. And then from there, the pivot into like onto you guys with your stories. Because I know like these, it, as I said in the um thing, the previous, yeah, the previous podcast and so on, man, was about that stigma that the stigma that Christian fiction has on it. Like it's a hurdle of, uh, as you said, the moment anyone sees Christian on it. And I think that was like a brilliant idea to rename to the remnant is that. As soon as people see Christian in it, it is automatically like just prejudged. Not even don't even need to see the actual comic panel or like check out the story. Cause like some people said that under some of the review videos, guys, like just from the thumb just from the thumbnail, I see this as Christian hockey, like hockey Christian cringe, and I'm not gonna get into it. And I'm just like, well, dude, you you're missing out in my opinion. But everyone has that well, just like first look at it. Yeah, that's that's been the biggest hurdle. And once we rebranded it, it, it did start to take off a lot more because part of that stigma was removed. But I still get those people that I don't like Christianity, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you know, it's a comic book, a superhero comic book at its heart that has a backdrop of Christian theology, end time theology. So I said, you watch The Exorcist or The Onan. Or people watch all these things that have a clear Christian backdrop to it, not theologically sound, but it's a Christian theme to it. And you don't mind watching that. Or, you know, something that Tolkien wrote, the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, all these kinds of things. I'm like, you'll watch all that, but you've already judged this book as being something that it's totally not. Because the book never preaches to you. Yeah. Like, 25 issues in and that's like that that is a literal that's a category in the christian fiction judgment scale that i look out for is like are you guys just including are you guys just including scriptures in the comic panels to hit a christian to, to hit like some kind of christian theme quota because there are some comics out there that there's a there's like a scripture verse in the comic panel and when you compare what the scripture verse says and the context of the scripture verse to what is going on in the comic panel is like wait this this makes no sense why is this scripture here right <laughs> but in the right mm -hmm. and and in the we try to keep... like, yeah yeah you go ahead Bill. I, we, we try to keep it theologically sound so we've had some writers that have submitted some things and they just didn't get it like we're very i am very very strict what we publish we have envelopes sometimes, but as you mentioned in one of your reviews, when we had the the punk guys cussing, you know, it might have been a little done, but in real life, that's what these people would be saying. So, kind of kids I work with, so I try to keep it true to that, but I also want it to be where you could go in the Bible and find this theme, or things like the Nephilim. Like, these are all things that we take out of scripture and put in this fictional world, but we like to think nothing we really do contradicts, uh, you know, the Bible. No, and that's the, one uh, of the things about um, the world building behind the remnant is that it's built on a, for me, at least from all 25 issues, deep into the 25 mainline issues, deep into the comic. And it's like everything has been built on a strong biblical, the Christian theological foundation. And not in a like a oh, allegorical Lord. way where it's like, it's like you guys call God um, the like the one, the great one or the one outside of time or like it's based off of Christian theology, but it's purely um, 
it's purely like allegorical or like some it's no it's like folks like these are bona fide born again baptized preaching the right. some preach the gospel kind of christian here is like tiffany knight for me is like my personal favorite because like the concept of uh, the, the concept of this guy who his favorite he's an mma fighter turned uh, join the um as i say the christian justice league well join the remnant join the remnant and he chooses his alter ego superhero name based off of his favorite scripture and his role as tiffany knight he goes on night patrols and just she has a licks onto repentance onto who like any any like villain or villain or criminal and to me that is a content that is like that that goes into the next one. Like, how did you come up with the expansive roster? That's the next question on your creative approach and presentation. How did you come up with the expansive roster of characters? And could you share some details behind the characters? Because I started putting together the Remnant Wiki and just seeing like different, all the multiple, like just it's, it's an expansive roster. I think you guys have over forty. 40 to i think it's like over 40 characters in total already with all the um combined yeah there's there's a lot and so you know the inspiration came a lot of these i created when i was a kid so when i was 14 i created rock i created raytheon and um, there's one other one too oh uh tech nine they were all kind of created so when i was going through i i tried to use some things from my childhood as an inspiration so Distant Thunder and Thief in the Night were from a series of movies that they used to show at church about the rapture. And they would literally scare the hell out of you because everyone would get saved that night after watching the rapture and what happened. And those were two of the titles of the films. So I used those for the characters to kind of give a nod to, to that. And a lot of them is just I, when I'm bored or I'm stressed or I'm depressed. I'll just sit down and create characters and they kind of just flow from there. And then we have a couple that were golden age characters in the forties and fifties. And a lot of those people didn't keep up the copyrights because at that time who thought they'd be worth anything. So a lot of these characters are available. And when I was a kid, I used to get the overstreet price guide and see all these golden age covers. And I was just like fascinated by these, goofy colorful characters so as one of the first things i wanted to do is bring back some of those characters that i loved and kind of incorporate them into you know what we're doing yeah so the, yeah. i believe that's characters like um deer and um man of war and i think um a top is atomic thunderbolt atoman and thunderbolt part of that too not so if i'm not yes. mistaken yeah yep, and i recently saw so, um I recently saw Black Cobra is also pulled from that as well, not so? Yes, oh. and Black Cobra was like a white military kind of guy. So I was like, ooh, I don't want to use that. So I just wrapped everything other than the name. I liked the name and then came up with the character. And we're going to be reprinting some of these old comics alongside of them. So you can kind of see where the inspiration came from. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome to cover. That would be awesome to cover. Well, that's that's cool because it's actually like there's and it's so funny because it's like I've started to like well covering the comics and stuff. It's funny how your brain works when you enjoy something that you like log all the character backstories and all the character backstories, all the names, all the first name, the last name, the age, the weapons, the powers, and everything. Because <laughs> I enjoy the character so much. To the point that started making the remnant wiki. It's a blessing because when I feel like this is going nowhere, it's an uphill battle to try to market it and get people to notice it. And then I see one of your videos and it like it gives me like inspiration. It gives me hope. It gives me that little bit I need to say, okay, God, you get all the glory for this. Let's bring some more people in. It's awesome to hear. Because that's well, that actually flows into the next two the next two questions on what are the ups and downs pros and cons excitement and disappointments that you have had on your creative journey with the remnant thus far and we could start with like the 
ups and downs. So what is like the best moment you have had thus far while pursuing the remnant that made you feel like, yeah, this is, it's going somewhere. I am enjo- enjoying, like this has some potential. Well, I think once I changed the name and really started to, to be confident and put it out there, I seen people really started to kind of say, oh, that looks cool. Oh, let me check that out. And, you know, it started to give me a lot of hope. I'm like, okay, so some people really do get the concept. And as more Christian people started finding it and commenting on it and saying that, you know, it blessed them. Or someone said in, in issue zero when Apollyon is holding up Grok and saying, you know, where is your God now or something? And then the rapture happens. And he's kind of defeated. You know, someone said they were praising the Lord, reading that. And I was like, there's no better compliment than to hear someone have that kind of reaction to it. Or or to say they were blessed. Or, you know, every order we send out a uh, Gospel of John, and it has on the cover is a picture of the apostle. And we send a tract. And to hear people say, you know, I wouldn't read the Bible, but when I got it, I picked it up and I started reading it. So it's those little things where like you're planting seeds into people and, you know, we wait for God to water those seeds and bring them to fruition. But it's just those little comments every once in a while that come in that just really kind of boost me. That's awesome. awesome. That that is awesome to hear. Because I know it's like, actually like, because one of the things for when I started reviewing the stories and it mean like pivot into um like doing the videos was because i just felt like there's no way they aren't so like actual solid as evan david says i love the term gospel infused entertainment out there like it's either all are bad or the ones that are actually good are just like the hidden gems you have to go mining for and as i said with the uh, marketing of it is like well we discussed that that is just a hurdle onto itself but yeah but i forgot i lost a piece of a trade i thought there <laughs> but yeah just to just to see it come to fruition i don't know somebody mean on the comments because to see how you put to, like the way you piece together the characters and the and in the scenarios that you put them in and especially when it comes to that um end times perspective on like these heroes fighting in the like in the hours like days and years leading into the end times it was such a unique perspective that and then with some of like especially the remnant scriptures i love those um pinups as well with just where just pinups on a scripture those are some of my um that little that little line of series is some of my um some of the one of the stuff on the remnant that I really like a lot as well, and to hear that, and then some comments on like as which goes into our well, one of our questions is that to see that the amount of aspiring creatives, Christian creators that have a Christian I have a Christian comic book idea, but always like put it off on like nah, this can't like this can't be done or like this wouldn't come through, and then when they see the remnant. A lot of them are like, wait, this is, there's actually, there's actually something, there's actually something out there and it serves as a big source of like inspiration to them. I mean, the Remnant is for my own series, a big source of inspiration for me. So to hear that on like the comments are helping and stuff is a, is really great to hear. So which goes on to the next. Yeah. I don't, we don't take any of the applause and whatever we give it all back to god because it was god who's allowed me to do this and god who inspired the idea and you know he's going to use it for his purposes and just seeing that even if one person goes and reads that gospel of john and gets saved this whole thing was worth it that's awesome that's awesome to hear so that leads into our well, the next part of it. You talked about the ups. What are the and I think you talk about a bit of the downs, but what is like one of the the cons and some of the well, a moment of great disappointment of the creative journey you've had with the Remnant thus far? 
well, when I started out, I started out with another publisher. And, um, you know, it was good to have some camaraderie with other Christians, but due to, like, clashes of egos and things that are just really ridiculous, I left and decided to just publish them on my own. And, you know, it was hard losing that that kind of community. But, you know, as with all things, you know, God brought other people into my path and you know like i was able to keep connected with evan david and as you know he's an incredible writer and you know he's still writing for me and and we had some other people come on board also who are christians and who believe in what we're doing so even in the disappointment god turns it around and 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 moves me to another area and, and something good always comes out of the disappointments and i guess the con is money it's what foils all of us small boutique publishers. Like, it's expensive to create a comic book. And getting the sales in so that you can kind of offset that becomes more of a, a hassle than it really should be. Yeah. Because yeah. then there's like the whole thing on chasing, uh, chasing crowdfunding and then after that's done, you're trying to get the um, say trying to get like decent returns on done comic sales and all that. And I am not into the business side of it, so I don't know. So, what like is one of the things you could share on like not like going into you guys deep into you guys like um finances or anything like that, but that was just like one thing you could share about it and hope that could be alleviated at least in regards to the remnant. In, in particular on um when it comes to revenue and those kind of stuff, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and when I started, there's a publisher called Advent Comics. They're another small publisher. And they just put out a ton of books. And I so, you know, I got in touch with, with the owner and I was talking to him. And I'm like, how are you putting out all these books? And he said, my secret is I work a lot of overtime. And I was like, well, that's not a good answer. But... <laughs> That's what I started doing. I have, an, I have two full-time jobs, so my second full-time job almost exclusively goes towards producing the Remnant comics. And, I mean, he was right. It wasn't the answer I wanted to hear, but if you're going to do it, you just got to go ahead and do it. So the hope is that putting this money in up front and building up our library so we can put out collected editions and things like that, that the revenue will eventually start coming in. You know, God says, don't, dis don't despise small beginnings. So I rejoice to see the work begin. Zephaniah 4.10. That's a, that's a personal motto scripture for me that I got from my I mean, mom when I started just YouTube and everything. It, it's powerful because, you know, it, it, it does get a little defeating at times. And you're like, you know, why aren't we getting as many sales as, say, like, you know, Joe Schmo's cr crowdfunding over here, and he's making... Two hundred thousand dollars on a comic that he never releases, and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? That you know he's doing all this, and I I got like a, a small little pittance, but you know we we just bless God for whatever He gives us, and I believe that He's going to multiply it, and that whenever I'm in trouble and need the money, it always comes. So I'm a bad businessman, so I'm probably not the one to ask. <laughs> And that, I think the sheet is in the red right now. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, I think that answered the question that we pray as God. Like, send the eyes, send the income streams. I was like, all glory to God. But I mean, bills have to pay at the same time. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's awesome but it's a labor well. of love. Yeah. You know, they're doing it from the passion. Because I know... um. There's a, a thing I did from um Sean Connell, guy over at um the owner of Think Media, big YouTube channel. He's a Christian guy and it, some things is like you do it's all about at times no, I think but Sean Connell and Ruslan on um sometimes it's about the the mission over the metrics. Whereas like right. you're doing it uh, from a place of passion and a labor of love, whereas like the put getting the mission done and out there beats the 
at times it's just like the fulfillment from that especially when you're doing something on to god with your passion that you believe that is something that he laid on your heart to pursue just to get it out there we go we don't go out there foolishly and like just start to say well god told me to do this so i do and this and then you start to realize that wait i ran out of my on my own and thought that like, that wasn't god but when you actually like beginning to just put it out there and doing it as a labor of lord doing it as a labor of love and seeing just god's hand like actually moving with it where it's like i don't know how we're gonna do this and god was like don't worry i got you it's just like yeah i understand I understand completely in that aspect and sometimes you don't see it uh, like when i started doing conventions you know people will look and they'll go wait is this christian i'm like yeah it is and they and they're just like blown away like wow we've been looking for something for our kids or you know i'm a youth pastor and i wanted to give you know something to the group or whatever and these it's just these little moments where people are just like whoa this is christian you know that's like a huge compliment like yeah we're you know because before i did grok comics i had grok radio i had a um i have a ministry called cyi worldwide and one of the things we did was grok radio and the motto was christian music that doesn't suck so we we played christian music but it had to be good and and I kind of transferred that into the comics. If we're going to do this, it better be good. That's awesome. I think by the uh, someone 25 issues into the comic, into the series, I think you guys have been doing a very, very good job at that. There are some, there are some I, in my opinion, some misses. <laughs> but yeah, there's some, as I say, <laughs> there's some misses. But for the most part, it has been it was like... It's a highly recommended for me to anyone looking for anything that is like a mix of Christian theology with superhero entertainment. It's a perfect blend. I appreciate that. It's it's so good to hear that. But so much work and love goes into everything that we put out. It's awesome. So the next question, well, I think you were just, well, I think we were touching on it. But the next question, well, I think what we just said, like completely fl flat, like flawed that, that um, question on us back. But it was, how has your creative journey impacted your faith? So how has your journey with the remnant made your faith in God stronger or weaker? But hearing from it, it sounds like it made trusting in God for you even like more essential than any anything else before you started the remnant. Oh, yeah. I mean... I really go into this very prayerfully um, and we've brought some people on. And like I said, we've had some scripts and it just, you know, like someone had blasphemy in one of the scripts. And I, I said to him, I'm like, do you not know you can't take the Lord's name in vain in a Christian comic? Why is that not clicking? You know, so <laughs> some things like that. And I had to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Or certain people that just didn't get it that I'm like, okay, we got to break ties with you. You know, and, and when God puts that stuff in my spirit, you know, I just have to act on it. But the, the biggest thing is I don't want anything that's going to potentially offend another believer. And of course, people get offended at everything. But so within reason, you know, to, yeah, we understand within reason. <laughs> right. You know, I, I like in one comic, um, at a man like the one page strip at the end of it i had him say damn and i was like that's not bad and i got a slew of email <laughs> how dare you and and i was like okay we're not gonna push the envelope that far <laughs> no, no, I think so, I... <laughs> but it's you know it's good to get that feedback because i thought it was pretty innocuous but some people were just highly upset you know this is Christian entertainment and they've decided to follow this and they, you know, they believe in what we're doing. So I kind of have that responsibility of, you know, maintaining where the line stops. Now I completely get that. Well, that would be fun because I do have some fun comments from our YouTube channel that I've isolated. And I said, I would definitely throw that at you. Oh, I can't in. wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be fun. So the next um next one is 
pulling from like your creative journey, what is a piece of advice you would give to aspiring Christian creatives that look up to the remnant and are using the remnant as a source of inspiration for their own comic series like um like myself who is in the process of penning and have a commission um commission contract with a artist to get to just get the thoughts out of my head that I have splurged onto a 149 page word document into actual character sketches. Wow. So what is like a piece of what is like some advice you would give to aspiring creatives? Especially in particularly well, Christian creatives. I would say surround yourself with people who have the same vision and the same beliefs as you do. Because as you know, there's a lot of denominations, there's a lot of nonsense out there that calls itself Christian. And, you know, you get a lot of negative from people just because it's Christian. And it's a lot spiritually to get all that negativity and to get battered. And it's also hard to kind of stay in the guidelines. Because, you know, when you're doing a Christian comic, you can't have magic. Um, we don't have time travel because since we're going to keep it biblically based, there would be no time travel. So there's a lot of stuff you kind of box yourself into a corner and you can't do, at, like if you were doing regular comics. But having the support of a group around you who knows the Bible as well as you or better than you is good to help ground you again. Because, some, you know, you have to have people who are looking at the outside and giving you that feedback. Because when we're in our heads and we're creating, everything just sounds great. Wow, this is wonderful. Wow, that's a great idea. But having people you trust around you saying that can't fit into your narrative framework or that's just a stupid idea. It's good to have that that honest feedback in the theological and in the, the practical sense. Creative aspects. Wow, that is that's powerful. You no, know, like because that is one of the um like so she thinks for me too personally there's a scripture that talks about in the um i think when i sent you my um when i was like hey because i i asked you to like be one of the advisors for my own comic series as i am making my way through the um through the through the um conceptualization phase and the scripture i quoted mm -hmm. directly in the email is the one where it's like in the council of in the council of many counselors there's safety and in, that's that's I believe that's in like Proverbs. It's from Proverbs, and it's the whole thing where some people, because like I've had that where I look at some comic, some comics that come across my feed and stuff, and actually start to look into it to like potentially put it on my review list. And I'm like, did did you have anyone that actually like double check this or compare like just like overlook it that no so that nowhere in this production pipeline of this thing that someone was telling you like our partner go back to the drawing board with that one day like <laughs> you had no like not even on the on the theological aspect or even just the creative aspect and as you say like glad you said it that is important it is for encouragement support and you know a faithful friend you know kind of stabs you in the front not the back you know and you know faithful is the wounds of a friend so I, I would take that any day. I like that. That's good on a t-shirt. Dory, I put Bill Ruff at the bottom of Faithful Friend stops you in the front. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. well, that's awesome. That's an awesome piece of advice there. So, and I hope the Christian creators of the explanations, because we do have a Discord server where folks just come in like this one guy. Uh, absolute knife of the hyperstar is his username but he has er he, he calls it he has erected it, his uh, tower of babylon of just text of his um of his comic series because in the explanations this code is a section with i uh, made a section for just christian creatives who need like just like to bounce the bounce feedback off of or you have an idea and you're in that idea phase and would like to know what other aspiring creatives are Especially Christian creatives think of it, and he has erected this entire wall of texts of what his series is about and stuff like that. So to hear that piece of advice on surrounding yourself with like-minded people 
that not and uh, not just yes men not like man right. to the point i'm pretty sure you mean not like man to the point that they yes man and they're telling you like oh yeah that's a good idea yeah that's a great idea and then after when it actually reached the like print publication looking back they're like why did you not tell me no and they're like well i didn't want to disappoint you like you need to be able to tell me things that would disappoint right. me for the betterment of for the betterment of what i'm doing right and, and i had to get uh, a new editor on some stuff because as you you know in the first few secret files there's some yeah, blunders there's... in there <laughs> yeah which, <laughs> which i'm going to be reprinting without the blunders but we had someone who was in the philippines doing that and the person who was checking was not checking like they should be so the comic is printed i open it up and i'm like please tell me that's not a spelling mistake that's a spelling mistake Ah, that is like all the things in the world i think we're yeah. getting better <laughs> yeah oh yeah the last couple of comics they've been they've been yeah because I, I think the secret files one i think secret files no secret files secret files three that was to me the Apoll like introducing the backstory to Apollyon and your Kong your six star console. <laughs> <laughs> and the um like Warriors backstory, weaponized and um Jesse Bell's backstory and everything. For me that was like that was one of the I whenever I review Secret Files, I'm always like, Well, it wouldn't hit like the five it would never really hit the five out of five category because of how the our written scale is when it comes to story because Secret Files isn't really a story. It's more like, well, right. as it is, Secret Files is a collection of just like, this is random information about this character or this event or stuff like that. It's not really stories, but Secret Files issue three with Apollyon, that was, that was, that was Estee for me. But then to go <laughs> into the like, the final pages where Robotron's, Warrior, Robotron's um, info card, and I'm saying, wait, why is Robotron's <laughs> info card giving me... It was like, I was confused because at one point I was saying, the first paragraph was about Pink Spade's, uh, Pink Spade's um, backstory. And then the second paragraph was Blue Flame's backstory. And then the power card was, I think, Tech Nine's backstory. So I'm like, one out of five when it comes to enjoyment right. factor. That is like... I went on a rant. I think I went I, on a I rant because I'm like, what a printer. A, I'm like, fam, what is this? What is but this? And everything else was fun. Fun. <laughs> Yeah, everything else was five out of five. Story was, it was, it was Esther, the, the artwork, partners, especially of that Apollyon and the whole thing of, um, where you put like the story of Lucifer falling to earth and his backstory, all the, Ah, to it was great. The theological base, it's actually dealing like this is the demonic side of the Christian, the Christian theme comic. Like we won because that's one of the things that I love about the rem remnant is that the demonic characters are demonic. It is not like it ain't. It isn't no fluff. It isn't no like oh well. We had to keep it sunshine and rainbows. No like yoke is yoke looks like yoke because yoke is supposed to represent something demonic as well as with Apollyon and all of that and for me that comic was like that was one of the best ones and then to get to like those actual hero cards and see those errors I was like Bill we you have to tighten up on stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> well and and that was one of the things when I started I wanted the villains to be villains that's why when they go through this red baptism process it, that's like the predecessor of the mark of the beast that's it. They're done. Once they do that, their soul is lost forever. And I wanted these characters to be ugly, evil, and nasty. But then the public thinks they're good. It's it's like I wanted to really reflect like what's going on in the real world. You have these Hollywood celebrities, and they're just disgusting human beings in action, in thought, in deed. But everyone loves them, and they're superstars. And and we just idolize these people. And I wanted the villains to be that commentary on our culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, because I think, well, someone that still needs like a debut or something is um that I am like most looking forward to how you're going to handle that is um Kaz DJ and um, Alta. <laughs> like... I haven't really used him yet because he is so disgusting of a villain. I, I 
I tried to write it, and I'm like, I just can't even, I can't even go there. Like, Dude, I don't know, that's people, hilarious. Like, but he is, he's just a disgusting person. And when I watch some of these pro-life women and the things they say, and like, you know, they said something like the Virgin Mary should have had a misca- an abortion, and I just get so livid. And I was going to take that and put that into the comic, but I'm like, I just don't want to stay in that mind frame for even two pages of it. Right. So, I don't know if he'll ever really appear anywhere. Because that, especially how you, um, that his, because that was in the Secret Files 3 as well. And I was like, especially how you contrast it with, um, Molek sacrificing. And then you were like, I really liked how you did, especially for that, with the, because with the short introduction to Castigia on the, not really, not really duality, because it's not that, but it's more like we were using scriptures like before I, before I formed you in my mother, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and those scriptures, but also contrasting it with like the, um, like Molech and the child sacrificing that Israel did back in those days. And then to bring that same demonic entity forward, like I would like when I put, when I was doing the remnant wiki and I put, it was, it was coincidence, but I find it was like super ironic when I put Kazdija's, like his image, the like full thing, Kazdija the abortionist and everything. Yeah. And I put it onto the fandom wiki website immediately after when I refresh, the website just came down. It, the fandom oh. shut it down. And I was like, <laughs> you, like I messaged the phone. I'm like, was it? Because I definitely, I directly put a line in it was like, was Kazdija that because that was the last wiki page I did and I was like was Kazdija's like backstory bit too graphic for fandom I <laughs> accidentally <laughs> thing and they were like oh no you that was like they didn't even know about that aspect but the person oh, okay. was like oh no it that was probably just a they didn't say it was a coincidence but the reason was yeah. that they bot flagged the um, wiki page as being a remnant as being a duplicate of the game uh the remnant so it was just like a butt error and the person uh-huh. unblocked it and well the re- trip the remnant wiki is up but for me that was just ironic because that's what i showed it that was like whenever i feel like to give someone shock value of the remnant the two <laughs> two characters i go for kazdija <laughs> and you and i'm like yeah i love this because it's like it's <laughs> demonic. It's weird for me to say it but i'm like dude i love the remnant because it's demonic i'm like what like it's like Christian is a theme of Christian superheroes fighting against the premature rise of the Antichrist. What do you want them to fight? Are the Christians? No, let them run fades on right, the demons. Right. And, and you know, the the original idea was that these villains are gonna be so horrendously evil that I wasn't even gonna spotlight them. They weren't gonna have backstories, they weren't gonna have any headlining issues, but I'm like, well, that's not really fair. I, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm just going to do it the, the whole way. So you see why they're evil. And, and I wanted to, to really reflect what real world evils there are today. So I kind of decided to go a little into the backstories, but not too much. That's awesome. So that is that section. So the next one, next question is more so directed, more so like something directly for you on. What are the future goals that you are willing to like share or about the remnant? Especially like, where do you see the re- where would you like the remnant to be at in five to ten plus years? So let's make a short little time capsule on today. The but we are recording this on February the twenty fifth, February the twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. So where do you see the remnant at on at like? February the 25th, 2034. Hopefully still in production and that it hasn't completely bankrupt me. Um, and really, I just want to keep putting out comics and bringing other people along for the ride. And I, I try not to set too many far goals because as we know, we make plans and God kind of laughs. But <laughs> what, what I would like is just to still be producing comics that I'm enjoying and that other people are enjoying. Like keep it simple. Well, yeah, that that 
thing that satisfies is to understand that I am, I think I'm a living, well, I think we all as Christians have testimonies of that, of we make plans and God laughs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I try not to take it too far. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing it one day at a time. And if God continues to bring people along to buy it and to read it and to enjoy it, you know, I'm up to keep producing it. And hopefully expanding it because I could use a little more help. That's awesome. That's awesome, Dad. And I look forward to the future of uh, the run, man, and to see what you guys keep putting out. He's like, well, I thought I finished my, I thought I got myself caught up after pivoting from like taking what well, I think it was six months six months to cover the remnant and then I'm like okay nice let me go to different <laughs> series and then come back okay there's four issues parables I think it's parables six seven parables seven yeah seven eight nine and I'm like okay we'll cover seven eight nine secret files number five <laughs> and then I'll pivot over to another series and then upload the video so to adjust my content cadence and is like remnant issue four is out dog and the regulators and sword of the remnant coming out. I'm like, wow, you we oh we cooking, cooking. We still yeah. we still going with it. Oh, I thought we were done for a while there. We cooking still. And so and like we awesome. really have a lot of of things in the works. Um Remnant five was written, but I wanted to take it in the I wanted the next issue after what happens in issue four to actually be like a concrete real world emotional kind of story. So like when you, if you ever watch like any anime, they'll do like this 16 part saga, this big, huge, you know, all out war and all this stuff goes on. And then the next will be like a slice of life kind of issue. So in like Dragon Ball, they fight these big characters and this thing's dragged on for 60 episodes. And Episode 61 is Goku learning how to drive. Yeah. Like, just something that you just stop. Like a palate cleanser, and, in a sense. Yeah. So, five is going to be that. Issue six is the Robotron story, and that's written that's by exactly. Evan David, and it's amazing. And then the issue after that is some of the remnant members who are angry going after the Watchers, and that's written by Matt Yasso. And then I'm back for issue five, six, seven. And that starts a whole new phase for the Remnant universe that takes place after Remnant Annual number one. I'm excited. I think you've reviewed Remnant Annual, have you? Oh, no, no, yeah. Uh, annual is still on the, um, on the, on the, um, the content key that to cover. That's so one of the ones to cover. Books. By the time yeah. you're done, we'll have another issue. <laughs> yeah, we'll have another one. Because at my time, I could only do like trying to get back to two reviews a week, but right now, it's keeping it on a steady flow of uh, one, uh, like one uh, video a week so that I don't burn well, out myself because I have a like do a lot of other stuff, the intensive day job and stuff as a virtual production supervisor and all that. So it's, oh, we'll wow. get through. So you're I'm, yeah, I'm always going. <laughs> I'm always <Yeah>. going. <laughs> That's why it's been it's been so like I think I sent you like I would like to have you on my podcast last year, November. And then uh, <laughs> after that it was like this work schedule was sporadic. Especially since it's work from home. There's no commute or anything. So and then sometimes we just get ambitious. Sometimes we lock off <laughs> at eight and other times we just we just making scenes and going until eleven. <laughs> Oh wow! So it, yeah, so let's just say schedule has been sporadic. So I'm just to keep going with to keep. I have like a rigid, more so a rigid schedule, especially towards explanations and stuff to keep it going uh, and stuff. I've been started on um, batch, well, batch recording a lot of the, a lot of the um trying to get ahead of batch recording so that I could cover more comics because I have going over to um Evan David's uh, the Battler that was like set for next two weeks to start covering and then i just saw like remnant four more and then i'm pretty sure by the time i'm pretty sure by the time i'm done with remnant it would be like well his parables his parables 10 11 12 and stuff. <laughs> you guys pump it and then last gen and then all of a sudden it's just like oh bill bill's cooking cooking <laughs> he was 
<laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm having a ball, and I, I really have some good people on my team right now who are really into what we're doing, and I have so many scripts right now that I have so much to pick from, so it, it's really a blessing. And, you know, um, yeah, it's just great. I, I'm just so blessed to have people who want to be a part of it, which is why we're able to pump out all these comics. That's awesome, Dave. Because even I was um telling, I think the last one I did was Distant Thunder issue zero, and Don like Don did amazing with that um with that issue. I enjoyed it a lot because it's one of those. And let me that... tell you the story behind this. Mm -hmm. Don had this idea for the story. He ran it by me, and I was like, "Yeah, this is cool." So he wanted to produce the book himself. So he hired the artists. He hired everybody, and he wrote it. And he spent an incredible amount of money on it. I could have choked him because it was so much money. <laughs> but he just got some top line people. And I was so excited for the book. And we released it on Indiegogo, which was probably a mistake. And it didn't do as well as the other books. And I was so upset because I'm like, this book is just a beautiful book. The art is incredible. Uh, Alan Cho, I mean, like that Alan Cho from the yeah. comic book is like, wow. <laughs> I mean, dude is the headline DC animation DC animation I'm cover artist. So that's like that's that's good billing right there. I can only imagine. Right. <laughs> that's why you want to choke him. Like we we in the red and this is what you went on. <laughs> yeah. And it's like he spent all this money and then at the end he gifted me everything. So you know, all the money he spent, it, it was that was like such a blessing that you know, someone was that into it that they went and, and produced this thing and gave it to Grok Comics. Like, that was, when you asked for the highs, that was probably one of the highs. To have someone do something like that and put so much love and effort into it. And it didn't do good crowdfunding, but now it's been selling. Yeah, like I don't know what happened. People it's... finally started to notice it and it started selling. And I'm glad because Don really did a great job writing and everything. It was just really wonderful. Because what I've told, what I remember, he, he commented and I responded back to him. And I, he was one of the guys from the remnant, like from this writers of the remnant that I would like to bring on to the podcast eventually. Because I have a list of folks, like some folks I have to like go through first and then as in go through as in um people that like, let's get to getting my podcast started. You're number two. And then we're like. They were supposed to come on in November, December, and we are going into <laughs> March on Friday. So, have some hey, folks it like that. When it's it, supposed happens. To happen. it happens when it's supposed to happen. And one of the things I was telling him is that with why I love this Thunder so much, and it's not a knock on like the other remnant books, especially with the with the um anthology series perspective to it, because I really love the anthology series perspective to it. But in like an anthology series. And with all the like the vast cast of it, with everything, some books and they end up feeling like, well, this is just a random mission log entry zero point zero two one into the remnant right. database files, and that's like that's just like the nature of superhero stories when you have like these big cast of characters and want to spotlight everybody, and like that's just the nature of it. Some of them feel like filler episodes, but then Distant Thunder felt like it was a uh, that was like a significant the way it was written and the perspectives to everything and the way it tied in everything it was like yeah this is like the needle going forward even though it's not part of even though it wasn't like uh, the remnant part of the mainline remnant issue it felt like a significant advancement into the story and we like guys if you haven't checked out the if you haven't checked out the Distant Thunder review or picked up Distant Thunder go ensure and pick up distant thunder it is i highly recommend it it's one of the thing it's been a while since i've given you guys a five out of five on the christian fiction judgment scale and that one got a five out of five and you know what's interesting about that was i wanted to push some of our black characters to the front of the line because I'm, I'm mixed and i i wanted to put you know some representation out there and, you know, I did a lot of marketing to black comic collectors. And they were the least amount of people to buy it. I mean, I got such feedback, like, 
he doesn't really seem black. I'm like, well, what does what that, does that mean? mean? He's not black <laughs> enough. <laughs> What, should he have sagging pants and you know have hip hop playing or like what do you what is black and it and it really it that was one of the things that really angered me oh well he just looks like an uncle tom or i i just couldn't get the criticism like how can you say something is not black enough like and then when we released black cobra oh everybody liked it oh it's so great oh, but no one bought it. Just the people that are, I should rephrase that, the people who chirp the loudest about Black folks need more representation and we need more Black this and we need more Black that. And my comment to them is, you know why there's not more Black stuff? It's because Black people don't buy anything. They don't, you know, when movies come out, they go buy them bootleg. Just all of this stuff in in black culture that we, you know we say we want representation but then when things come out we don't support it so you know i was kind of on this it it, it confounded me honestly thanks for sharing that because that's awesome like that's cool to hear especially from like that perspective that perspective of it because like remnant is that's one of your things of i don't know if was it something I remember if it was a comment because it's a blue, but it's like the whole aspect of um like the multicultural, the multicultural um superheroes and is this like pandering? Yeah, when when um right, I know exactly where the came in, the comment came from. I did the um I think in the last the podcast is before the I've been doing so much podcasts. One of the <laughs> podcast installments, and I'm seven, only seven installments in, but one of the podcast installments was respond, was like reading all the, like, just take a pin up of one of the characters and it just um, put it on to just ask people based off of the image alone, what is your first impression and what superhero name and superpower would you give them just based off of the comic panel alone? And I remember for Salt Talk, it was a bunch of like, Someone went on a whole rant about identity politics and whatnot. If he's black and he was from Marvel, his name would be Black Dis. And I'm just like, okay, that is all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> we... well, all well, right. Look at the character Black Cobra. People were angry. Well, why does he have to be black? Because he's Black Cobra. I mean, I didn't make <laughs> up the name. I just liked the name and used it. I was like, you'd be really pissed off if you found out the original Black Cobra was white. I <laughs> so, <laughs> you, well, you haven't even gotten about that, you, know? you haven't even gotten on screen adaptation yet and you're already re swapping and bowing to the to yeah, the, uh, right? the walk mob <laughs> 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 oh, and then I had people tell me I'm not black enough I shouldn't be doing black characters I'm only half black so that doesn't count I mean yeah. Like so there was this. that too and eventually, I just tell people, go kick rocks and move on. Long past that point where anyone's criticism wounds me online. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. So, well, that was insightful. I didn't even know what to think <laughs> about that. That was insightful. So moving like in, on in one to... Of the, mm -hmm. Yeah, we one finish, of the yeah. Facebook groups that's black, black comic characters, we actually had a really productive conversation about what black people say and what they do like you could say we need representation but if you don't support it like milestone right now those books are tanking they're great characters they're great stories no one buys them so of course you're not going to have more black superheroes if no one buys them well just said like the that's just in general and like we need it because that's one of the things i make sure to push with the comic and make sure it's not like with the reviews especially doing the comics explain style of the reviews to not just to not just like put everything out there of the comic to make it like more so a pirate source of the comic where people are like oh well I got the full comic from watching the explanations video, so I don't feel really the need to go buy it. No, like I started to I started to gatekeep a lot of information out of 
the reviews. Still keeping that comic explain style because it's planning on doing right. how those guys do um the full story, kind of like comic story, and like the he does like his hour long the hour long video of um just like all the story beats in it. So I plan on doing that for the remnant and black blossom and the comics and they that I cover just make like a long cause that as someone said coming into this year of YouTube and stuff, people have people's attention span went from the attention span of a goldfish to if your video is too short, uh, it's it's a phenomenon phenomenon on um YouTube right now where people just like they would sit and binge the podcast and they but like shorter videos and stuff. They those things just don't work on the um on the channel. So doing longer videos but also tailgating the information where I'm only using a total of uh, a third of the comic panel and not going into the dialogue, like not too deep into the dialogue. Like I would over over simplify it to encourage people to go and get the comic. Because there's one thing for me to be covering it, but to be covering it and then it's just like a bunch of impressions. Because if people say, right. oh, well, we need more Christian fiction and all Christian fiction is cheesy hockey and too preachy. And I'll, I'm just over here like, well, these aren't. Check them on and like, eh, I don't really have the finances to <laughs> support them. Like, you hold on. No, no, no. Pause. Mm, we, that is unacceptable in my eyes. <laughs> you all have the, the highest of high opinion against Christian entertainment. But when you're presented with like actual solid and uh, solid alternatives and posting up a bunch of like for example i tell people when the whole um she with um superman when john john kent superman's son came out and they were pushing his whole um his whole his whole um like he being gay and all these kind of stuff i had like people who were well not really into comics but like were like just outrage about it and saying like so x so x what you think about it and i'm just like i don't like me personally i don't keep up with it i've like completely replaced my a lot of my catalog just you have the stuff that last night that could use this last night on the um when we, the live stream the game development live stream because that's a point someone asked a question on what were my thoughts on the fact that um nintendo ban nintendo banned um and for 15 years ago, supposedly, I didn't fact check it, but the question was, Nintendo has banned all all real world religions out of any of their video games. That was a question, and someone asked what was my perspective on it. And the response was, well, I can't really fault a non-Christian company for not having a Christian's best interest at heart. So people right. will go to outrage about these things and, oh, they're just making everything gay and everything woke and there's no, like, they're taking God out of it. And I'm just like, well, over here, you that like, I compiled an entire 37 set of comics, not just running from all over. That to me is solid song edification. And I'm like, well, you see, I don't really have the $5 to really put in to that. And I'm just <laughs> like, fam. Then stop complaining. You, you have no right to complain if you don't want to be a and part of the solution. Can... Because like a book like Black Blossom or Alpha Red should be selling probably five times what it's selling. Because there's some they are solid, they are really balance, enjoyable yeah. reads. And I'm like, what's going on? Why why are Christians not supporting this stuff? There's some quality, quality books out there. And I don't know. I, I Christians just don't want to support it for one reason or another, and it blows my mind. Like you're loud about the problem, but you're not at, you're not championing the solution. And that was like my whole thing on like because it's like the whole perspective of the channel has shifted from covering these the comic issues and statements from authors so it's like blatantly blaspheme in the Bible and God to like I am tired yeah. of highlighting and spotlighting the spotlighting what i see as the problem because it just felt like a game of whack-a-mole or a hydra you cut down one head right. nine more grow nine more grow back right and it's like stop highlighting the problem and just like make a sort of post on like you heard what this comic writer said oh my god did you see how this new series is exonerating lucifer i'm like no i don't 
I don't keep up with those things because I have like way too much Christian comics that are <laughs> added like added for gospel infused entertainment to keep up with that every once in a blue moon I'll go and check out those things and people like as I say complaining about the problem but they don't want to support the solution right and and I had contacted like I did pod years ago I was doing live podcasts on blog talk radio and met a lot of people who were doing a lot of fringe kind of Christian shows that were talking about you know UFOs and the Nephilim and all that kind of stuff and they've since gone on and they have really huge and I'm going to put this in air quotes ministries <laughs> and they talk about all these topics so I approached two of them that I knew from back in my days on blog talk radio and they're like well we don't really know what to do with this I'm like you have a bookstore you can put it in the bookstore I mean it goes along with the themes and they just wouldn't do it and I'm like you know where do you go with that it's like it's either it's too christian it's not christian enough or christians just don't want to support comic books there's this old stigma that comic books are evil and all this stuff so we're in this weird kind of gray area right now where you know we kind of don't fit in either category because you have two you're too Christian for like the non-Christian comic book crowd, but then only like extreme Christian crowd, you are like too, I don't know, like not Christian enough. And it's just like, that's why you just have to put the trust in God for these things. It's like, where? I'm where? like, but you'll carry Joel Osteen and like Joyce Meyer and all these people who teach blatant false doctrine. But you have something that has good solid doctrine it's entertaining it's high quality and you don't want to like you don't know what to do with it or come on that is i think we got yes, it out of our system <laughs> we got that rant out of our system let's let's continue because <laughs> i think we could keep looping on it <laughs> uh, so, so let's... Book mm -hmm. and alpha red live in this and there's others but those that's what comes to mind live in this gray area and it's like, you know, where do we go from there? Yeah. Yeah, those are like, those are two of my favorite film series as well that I covered. You see, in from Disconnecting it from, um, that the first introduction to those were from, um, from the Ramadan. But well, shout out to James. He is on the, um, coming on. One of the folks that I contacted to come onto the podcast, I was down and just what, what he's doing with Alpha Red and continue to, um, I'm happy for him. It it just awesome, an awesome guy, and he just puts out a great product. And his artwork is his <laughs> his yeah. artwork as well as his fire. Yeah, it's just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill. So now we have uh, we got that out of our system. We double ranted on that. <laughs> hopefully that <laughs> hopefully find a solution. Because that's like the current <laughs> only problem that I see to it uh, right now with that aspect, but. Hopefully the solution shall come. <laughs> Next, we are going to bounce off some questions from the Explanations audience and under the post Sunday that I made regarding the um regarding the podcast for some questions that people would like to throw at you, as well as some things that people have said above the comic in my comment section and wanted to fight me for it that I say, you know what, I'm going to pitch this to Bill. Eventually, when I bring it on to the um, and let them pick their bone up with you. So, first question. All right, bring it on. Yeah. So, the first question, which the most common question I see, is where can these comics be? Where can these comics be purchased, and where are they being sold? Right now, they can be purchased from our website, which is grokcomics.com. That's the best place to get them. Um. And the other place is IndiePlanet.com has them. And I've drawn a blank. There's a couple more places. Indie but the Planet, best place to go is uh, really our website. Oh, your website, which is grokcomics.com. And I think it also has the tribulationtaskforce.com as a yes. domain for it too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you guys Either heard one of those. It. So you guys heard it from the owner and creator himself. Because it's like, I put the... Put the um, 
the link in the description and so folks are still like where could these comics be purchased i'm like i'll start by putting the like bubbles i'm out of the youtube monetization system for a while but when i get back into it i could fi- actually put the direct link bubbles so there's that call to action directly in the um videos there's a lot of videos i have to go and update and put the direct issue links to oh boy let me not think about that no <laughs> <laughs> make it more work for you yeah so the next question comes from um well i think we covered this earlier but this was one in the facebook group from eddie eddie the heart which says bill what bill when did the inspiration to create croc came to you can you define it to a date or better yet a time now i know we covered that earlier but i just going through all the comments because there's actually not that much there's some spicy ones but not all but not much <laughs> <laughs> let's get to the spicy ones yeah so i think we covered that earlier so right so the first spicy ones these are well these are two i read it two back to back and then you would give your you would give your um response to it but the okay. first one is i'm surprised that this was a yeah comment on a question both of them are the same nature. I'm surprised that you didn't take issue with the depictions of nudity and lustful depictions of female characters in this comic. I'm also surprised that it made it into any book that calls itself Christian when it's a very obvious problem. What's the deal? And then the other question of the same nature. Now that comment is under my um my parables issue two review of the sections of the book that highlighted Mariella's story on her um I have I had my response to it. I would echo my response after you gave yours. But the next one was to on the pinup on where I was asking the just putting it on YouTube, a uh, community post saying based off of this image alone, using one of the few pinups of Jelly Bean, which I can't wait to see her in action and the last like brought forth with the last gen based off of this pinup of a jelly bean what superhero name and superpower would he give her and uh, someone took issue with the image saying with all respect in the world if you truly if you are truly interested in expanding christian fiction through comic books female heroes and even men should be dressed more modest this is in no this is in no way appropriate for children. It's entirely too revealing. I also think Christians have failed to grasp the spiral from soft porn to actual porn. It happens this fast. It is also it is also all it is also all over our cartoons as kids. It's all our cartoons as kids also. So that fumble when I was reading that. But I am like these two people picked a bone with you and your depiction of uh, the like in women in these two cases so i am putting that before you and then i will give my um give what i my response to it was well they're absolutely correct um sometimes we hire artists and they go a little crazy and i've already invested the money so you know i just kind of go with them even some of them are a little questionable some of this the outfits could be better but like i mean they're superheroes. What are should they be wearing dresses and, and high heels and culottes? I mean, there is a line. And one of the things that is being done going forward is we are trying to make sure that the female characters are drawn with a little better proportions. So they're not that kind of target where it'll cause someone to lust or whatever. And being a, a comic creator, that's a hard line to have women because there's nothing too practical you can re- you could put them in. They're wearing gymnast suits, and that's kind of what superheroes wear. But I am aware of that, and I I have been a lot more conscious of that as we're moving forward with things. Well, that echoes my um my response to the two question the two questions as well because like for the Mariella issue my thing that I said to my response to it was that well and then there's also the perspective of like loss especially of someone who has overcome loss and whatnot overcome loss for myself personal like recently I even um I deactivated my personal Twitter account and deactivated my personal Twitter account because it's just like everything I don't know everything on twitter 
I could go into a Christian creative comic comment section or on a Fortnite comment section because I make my Fortnite games and just be lambasted with gift, gifts that are not <laughs> well for the flourishing right. of man. So I personally right, right. decided to deactivate it because then it's just like bombarded with those stuff. But what I was, my right. response there was that when, especially with how you guys drew from with Jelly Bean in particular, Jelly Bean and, um, and that issue of Mariella, my response to the one with Mariella was that she, um, she, the context of it and the way it was drawn, at least to me personally, it reflected how characters like Adam and Eve are drawn in the Bible with, with the likes the seen in depictions of, um, of uh, like folks like Bible Project or the Action Bible or everything, it was silhouetted. It wasn't meant to. It wasn't drawn in a lustful way or to like in, right. to like spike pride. Then let me pride to spike lust. And then I also say right. is like sometimes there's some things. There's like some things when it comes, especially with someone who is like not talking about myself, but like just from personal experience before is like when you're struggling with lust you have the ability to undress and see everything as lustful. So there's right. some things where it's like, because then there comes a point where the person isn't even dressed lustfully. Like if you know, well, you wrote, if you know, you wrote the backstory, Jelly Bean's backstory, she would be one of the last people to be drawn or to be like, to be promoting anything um lustful or right. lustful or anything like that. So for me, I was telling them is like if that that was like talking from my own experience with lust and stuff is like if that is like co causing like because they I remember watching from Ruslan a Ruslan video where he was talking about that topic on like people like oh well all of a sudden this becomes like this, everything this like turns into a uh, tightrope where it's like well that's not even lustful but it's lustful to me and it's like well yeah is. It looks lustful to you, but in reality, it's not like what, like, in reality, what do you want them to wear? These are Christian superheroes who, to me, at least, well, the actual official remnant artwork that goes into it, not talking about, because they have some fan art for this competition that I said in the, um, in the comment section of this video that if anything ever starts to venture into that, what I would deem as lustful or erotic kind of area, I am, well, yeah. I am called giving you, a, I am finding your phone number and I'm calling you like, yo, what is this? <laughs> and I will call it out. But in these particular depictions of like jelly bean, I think I, me personally, I found it was like a over, like a overreaction to it. Especially that image of jelly bean. Like when you look at the image of jelly yeah, I had I, to, I went and carried it and showed it to my sisters. I went and showed it to my sisters. They know fashion and stuff. And I'm like, do you guys think this is like lustful? And they were like, well, no, the girl just has a curvy body as a black woman. And I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense. And then I, as I say, a pinpoint thing where when someone is like struggling with lust, I, my thing to that person is like, well, you need to take that personally to God. Because as the Bible, like, you need to take that personally to God. Because then you start to, like, police everything according to that. And then when right. people actually look at it, it's like, well, no, this is a, it's not making me lost. And she's, like, fully, she's, like, fully covered. There's no, like, kind yeah. of, like, anything showcasing anything. It's, right. it, like, it's a bodysuit. A full bodysuit. <laughs> like, what do you mean and it's pink revealing? Pink. Well, Pink Spade, they, sometimes the artist tends to draw her opening really low. So, And I'm like, no, you cannot have her breast showing. It needs to be up, but the collar needs to be up. It can't be low. And there's been some things like Yoke that I almost did not print. Because after the artist had sent the art, I was like, this is a little too risky. Yeah. But money was sank into it, and I'm like, well... I'm just going to have to go with it. But it, we are very conscious of that. So awesome. if anyone, wh whoever had that criticism, we, we do take that seriously. And if you guys ever, like, if anything ever comes out that like it's too far on like actual official, because I mean, for the art contents, like there's some things you can't, um, you can't stop <laughs> some people. Right. It's just you know, because I know the run then has a, strong to what from what i see a strong non-christian 
audience as well and non Christian um create non Christian creatives who participate. So one of the things I saw for this wrong is that with Rapture in some of the early the early depictions uh -huh. of Rapture, the chest area is not actually revealing. It's like a red I believe it's like a red dot in the blue, not so? Right, the, right. Yeah. But like for some of the drawings that I'm seeing coming around in this cycle of the contest, it's like cleavage and I'm like, wait, no, that's not the characters. That's, right. the, that's, not, <laughs> that's not the characters design. <laughs> Where right. did that but those are in non if you publish that, then I'm using I told the told one of the guys like if Bill ever goes down that route of uh, lustful depictions or whatnot, <laughs> I'm framing this um this comment. <laughs> But at least for the examples that they were using at the time with Parables Issue 2 and that image of Jelly Bean in context to what the characters are right. about and stuff, for me, it wasn't spiking lust. But I, I'm and, and, glad and really that... Everyone wants to read women. Everyone yeah. wants to read a comic right. and there's ugly women wearing like Mennonite suits or Amish suits. I mean, it's just... God created women. They're beautiful. And I think we try to portray them in that light not a lustful light but as beautiful strong christian women that's that was the same that was the same well that was the perspective i got from the very first couple issues of the remnant especially with um folks like polka's polka's um backstory and some of their backstories is like they in like in reason they would be the last ones to actually like, actually represent in court <laughs> They would be the last ones right. to ever want to adorn a lustful looking suit. I'm pretty sure, like the way you write the characters, if they were ever presented with a suit like that, they might, they might, like beat someone up really bad. <laughs> <in that context. laughs> so, and a yeah. lot of these backstories come from. I've been a, a social worker for 25 years, so a lot of these backstories come from people I've actually had sitting in the seat for therapy. So that's been a plus to that because I have tons of backstories I can use now that are real. And, and I hope for the, for the women characters, we're making them believably believable women. They're strong. They have their flaws. They have their backstories, but they're trying to do the right thing. Because even with like the Mariella, the Mariella, um, the Mariella issue, on like Mariella's backstory, like even though she's like one of the watchers and stuff, and the whole like with Jesse Bell and stuff, her backstory it was real and it was raw. I enjoyed, I loved it, because it's like the it's stuff that I've heard. Not by I have made sure to add caveat that no, I do not believe that there's um some woman that got some because sometimes that gets lost in translation. So when you say stuff <laughs> that I've heard, they're like, wait, so you're telling me that you heard of a woman who gave herself to the Antichrist and became this butterfly-winged superhero <laughs> flying around. Yeah, these Christians are stupid. I'm like, dude, that is not, no, that is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> I'm talking about the core basis of a backstory of someone who lost a son and decided, like, started to go into the, or was already the occult, started to go deeper into the occult and as we saw, became part of Apollyon's Apollyon's The Watchers. So with that backstory and with her, it's like, no, these are like, these are things that horror stories, well, not actually like horror movies, but horror stories that you hear of things that people who were in the occult went through and then they came out, especially those from, those, um, from New Age or from the occult to Christianity type stories. It's like, these are the kind of things that they went through. No, did none of them became... Right super villain butterfly ladies make yeah. sure to put that caveat <laughs> but like the rituals <laughs> and those kind of stuff it's like it gets bad and like when i actually saw marilla i was like oh no like we dealing like no the villains are these aren't sugar-coated villains we're not sugar -coated, like i say we you're not sugar-coating stories <laughs> and stuff like it, it's real it's real dark and dirty the way how it actually is in reality yeah, they're not sympathetic villains. There, there's one person on the Watchers who did not take the red baptism that could be redeemed, but it's one out of the whole group. And actually, Evan David's going to do a story about that character. 
So, but yeah, we wanted the villains to not be redeemable. They're evil, they're wicked, and that's it. I'm going to say, like, what we want in a Christian Justice League style comic book, what do we want the Christian heroes to be fighting against? Other Christians? No. Let them run the fear of the demons. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and, and even when we have things like, okay, like Yoke, she is, she was into the occult and yoga and all that stuff. And, you know, the apostle goes and says, demons flee in the name of Jesus. And she's powerless. And, you know, most people would be like, oh, thank you. You know, I've been burdened with this evil spirit and all this. And she, she's mad. She a mountain. She's, she's mad. You know? <laughs> yeah. She, and she goes and gets more demons. So, <laughs> like... I mean, what do you do with, with a person like that? She had her opportunity. And then she said, no, I'd rather have the demons. And this is indicative of how people are these days. You'll have some people, they'll go to church. You know, they'll hear the sermon, they'll say a prayer, and they think they're saved. You know, and then a few months later, they're like, no, this is too much. I'm not following all these rules. And they're back in the world again. So that's kind of an allegory for what really happens. God sets people free, and then they say, you know what? I don't want you. I'm, I'm going back to the world. That's kind of what her story was representing. Yeah. And I got that to run through with that um, issue. That was, I think, Ramont 3. No, that was Parables. Yeah, that was Parables. Parables something. Wow, we are easy. I think we got Parables 9. Parables 3. Four. Three. Yeah, Parables 3. Or something. I don't even know my own comics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you're cooking, cooking. You have to keep a track of the ingredients. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. So that covers that. So the next question. Now, this one. Now, this guy has been uh, the... I call him my atheist buddy, but I think he would be angry if I call him that. Because, I mean, he, <laughs> in a short period of time, he came and he became a top commenter on the channel and has surpassed some of the guys who, like, tell me in a DM that, dude, whenever you start doing your own thing, I like, I am here to support you. I love what you do. And actually, like, message me. I was trying to, like, set, set up um to send me some um send me some cash or whatnot when I did the, um, the my first game game development project so he has like comments of past and he's become a he has become a top commenter so one of the funny things was you came on on the tail end of when i was covering the remnant books so he left a comment so when i transitioned over to evan david's black blossom after the second issue poor guy said ah finally some some comics that are not just another religious pamphlet in disguise. It's good to see these kind of things. I'm like, man, you're in for a while, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he obviously did not know how Evan David writes. How oh, Evan David writes. I'm like, oh, dude. Like, you're in for a ride. Because this is by who I consider personally to be the best Christian fiction writer. And the guy literally puts in his bios that he is a christian a christian um christian fiction scribe so you're in for a ride <laughs> so enjoy these first two issues but then he started to like try to do so one of his first questions is that for sure uh, hmm? <laughs> uh you just broke up a bit for me to repeat well you can hear me mm. We would sort out these short little technical issues. Oh, I, I didn't say anything. I was waiting. Oh, but, yeah. The, yeah, I could hear you now, right? Yeah. For some reason, that one my end was not breaking up. Yeah, I could hear you. You good? Yep, I'm good. All right, nice. Yeah. So he made it his mission. For every single, every single, like, villain that I put up, it would be, like, what is, do you think this character is? What do you think this, um, character, what would you give this, what superhero name would you give this character? And when I did the villains, I used Apollyon, Yoke, and, um, Apollyon, Yoke, and uh, Nephilim 6 on what su super villain name would you give them to see, like, how close the names and descriptions they come up with. 
is aligned to your to what your actual description of the characters were. And some of them hit the nail on the head. For John and the he for when I did um John, when I did the Apostle, he like turned it into a villain for his comic book series. And it was just like he was in the comments refuted. But he left a cool out of all his comments, uh, refutation comments, he left a cool comment that I think I would want to pitch in your direction through his bone at me to his bone at you, which is this okay. is for context. This is in um, this is in Remnant issue two, which is the issue with um, John the Apostle going and running in a fade on Nephilim six, where he mm-hmm. going through the castle. And his comment in the question was, he put a direct timestamp to where I showcased the panel. And it was, correct me, but those monsters with lion, with lion bodies and human faces are intended to be on the side of God. I mean, they're the ones that are supposed to torment people for three months. Why are there the villains here? Well, it speaks of accuracy with yours. Meaning he's like throwing shots at me and you for not like, for using right. quote unquote villain, quote unquote villains in the Bible as um, villains in the story. Because then he went down a whole thing. Because then I tried to explain, like, because I felt I didn't even pick it up the first time I went through the comic. But the second time I went through the comic on how you're using Apollyon, which I did well. And then what didn't help me either was I make a misspeak saying Apollyon and the Antichrist are merging up with the Bible. And I was like, wait, no, it's the other way wrong. It's not, not related. Just like I play on names on Apollyon in that scripture in Revelation is. um. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but Apollyon from that scripture in Revelation where the name Apollyon is mentioned is like the the dark angel that is in command of the um the locust. Not so? In the abyss. Right. Right. Yeah. And right. from my knowledge, that was the perspective that you took from it. And I'm telling like, dude, you help me appreciate what the author did with this even more. On like with Apollyon and pulling from that scripture and then linking it to, well, in context of what the locusts represented and everything on how you use them as villains here. But I want to pelt his bone at you so that you could explain yourself on why you're doing this. I mean, you're turning what well, God is using for, well, judgment into villains. What, like, was that one built? Like, was the accuracy? Well, before God does things, before he does a lot of things, he does foreshadowing of things that are to come. You know, like with Jesus. The whole New Testament, Old Testament is pointing to Jesus. Every story, everything in the Old Testament is pretty much about setting up the coming of Jesus. So it's the same thing with this. That's the principle I used. Who says that these creatures aren't somewhere? And who says that God created them? Because a lot of times God uses the things that man comes up with and uses it against them. So these could be creatures that were here that Apollyon has created. I mean, there's, there is no one answer to it. I like those characters. I like the description of them. So I figured if the Antichrist was going to use something, why wouldn't he use something that's going to be used in the end times, whether he has a part in it or not? I was the same perspective and, I got from it. And you know what? If, if, if that's the question, you're really reading too much into it. Sometimes <laughs> it's just okay to let things be. No, that's awesome. And, and yes, Leon is the is the one who controls the gate with the locust. And when you start looking at his names in Greek, it's Apollos. He, you know, that name kind of carries into a lot of things, including extra biblical things and pagan things. So I figured if I'm going to use that. Uh, a char- the name of the villain, the main villain who's going to be the Antichrist, it should be something like that. That's synonymous with an evil, wicked person. So, you know, it wasn't too deep of a thought yeah. with it, really. Some things just are what they are. Because even uh, like, cause, and even how you used it in commentary sources, Apollyon is not linked. And that's why I realized, like, because describing the whole thing with, um, like, the, the Mark of the Beast and all those kind of things, it was kind of like button heads on through the comments were like well that doesn't make no sense why the devil would um want people to take the mark of the beast and worship him when they all go into damnation i'm like i'm not does it say my atheist buddy because he comments a lot he comments more than the actual people who hardcore support so at <laughs> least like 
<laughs> he is no longer like like for me his comments are the like gives perspective on like I like it because it gives perspective on what like hardcore atheists see right. but see of the Christian comic series because I'd never want things to be like just an echo chamber in a sense. But then there's sometimes where right. some comments are just like, okay, buddy, you could you could keep with that book there. I mean, I say yes. And <laughs> most of us like the Hebrews and the Antichrist, Satan knows he's defeated. He knows this. So what is he gonna do? He's gonna take down as many people as he can. His whole sin was pride. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be like God. So of course he wants people worship him. That's one of his main goals. He, he wants people he to adore him, distract them from from God, give them everything they want, and then they ultimately are damned. That's the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, I think you, I think you, you answered for me. You answered and <laughs> took the bone that was thrown at me that I said, hey, I'm going to throw at him. Because <laughs> I told him directly, I'm going <laughs> to throw that bone at him. <laughs> and I think you answered it perfectly. At least with the context. Because I don't know if you saw it. I think you might laugh but if you see it. But uh, in the last issue of the um, the last podcast interview, well, not podcast interview, last podcast installment, I did go in through the names that people gave to some of your remnant characters. <laughs> and I highlighted his um how we turned your characters into villains, all your heroes into villains, <laughs> and your villains into heroes for his original, <laughs> his original, um original, his OC that he's, um, working on like yoke turned into this um hero that will help his fairy being original character main character and she was shunned by her tribe because of some christian mis- christian missionary that came in and say that these kind of the magic that she's using is wrong so he like has her where she got shunned from she's like she turned into yoke because she got shunned from a tribe and she helps her character and then um apollyon <laughs> Is like this evil Christian missionary, this evil Christian missionary who wants to eradicate fairies. So he built this like anti sword. I know, like the guy is creative. I kind of knock him. Like I love like as much as he's like like the discourse or whatnot. Like I can't knock him. Like the guy's creative with it. So I think you might enjoy. <laughs> so he turned your Christian superheroes into evil fairy hunting villains. But I appreciate oh, that's what this the coming. devil would do, right? <laughs> yeah. Call things that are good evil and things that are evil good. Yeah. So uh, that was like, uh, as I say, not much spicy comments. Those were the spicy comments. <laughs> Those two. <laughs> so our next one. Oh, no, we have one more. Our next one. This was especially on Remnant issue one. This is a pin. I literally pinned your response to it. And I think you might just write a response. But wait, if John was in prison in the Vatican. Is this an anti-Catholic type of comic, Christian comic? Yeah. Well, I added the new printings of the Remnant Number Zero. I added a page called the Prophecy of the Popes, and there was a Catholic friar who stated he had this vision that there was going to be—I forget how many. I think it's 117 popes or whatever the number was. There was going to be a certain amount of popes, and that the f- last pope would be the Pope that defects from the faith, and he would lead the sheep astray. So he'd basically be the false prophet. So I use that as the basis for why John was locked in the Catholic Church, because there are factions right now in the Catholic Church that are Satanists, that do occult rituals and do all this. And so it's very likely that this group of underground Catholic mystics could have done something like this. So no, it's not anti-Catholic, but it is based on Catholic writings. Yeah. I think that as you say, if you put that um label into the label into the um the Roman issues. The reprints of the Roman issues. I did pin your um comment the blog post that you did on it into the um into the into the um the comment section of that video as well so we have well those are like the more so spicy co- co- comments so we have just two more for you but i think one okay. more. yeah one more because you did um you did answer one yeah one more which is from johnny martinez in 
the inside of the Grok Comics Facebook group, which guys, if you haven't joined the Grok Comics Facebook group, Facebook group. I highly recommend it. That's the best way to keep up to date with a lot of the workings that is going on with the remnant. And the question is to you, Bill Rob, what were the steps you took to launch your first issue? Did you put all the money yourself or did you have some kind of funding somewhere? Were the writer and artist were you the writer and artist all in one? Well, the first issue I am the writer of and i designed the universe the uh we have a bible of our universe of what can happen what can't happen and the premises behind it so i did all that legwork and i did write the first three issues of remnant and some other stuff and basically it came out of my own pocket it, it was literally one page at a time and that's how i funded it i was working at a boarding school in new york uh, for international students, I wasn't making a lot of money, but, you know, we just put one foot in front of the other, and slowly but surely, we had our first issue. So for those of you out there who were looking to start your own comic, I wouldn't look for funding or pitching to companies or any of that. The best way to do it is, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And even if it takes you six months to get that first issue out or a year, you know, go for it. There's a, a big satisfaction when you're done and it's printed and that book comes in the mail and and you see like the fruits of your labor so i just tell everyone just pick yourself up by your bootstraps and, and do it all on your own because there's a lot of satisfaction in doing that and having creative control so that your vision comes out the way you want it awesome that's more inspiration for me too <laughs> I'm just i mean it's it hard on. yeah it ain't easy, but, you but do it's it well one, one piece at a time. Yeah. All right, Bill. Well, I think well, I'm drew, I'll be drawing blanks if I try to ask anything else because that was it for all the questions and stuff that I had. And we are uh, hour and 15 minutes into this recording. Checked at the beginning, it was seven, and now it's almost 10 p.m. <laughs> so, well, if and, you and have. Before we go. Mm -hmm. Let me say that, like, I really appreciate all the work you do. You know, the reviews, I love it because you're honest. Even when I don't want to hear it, it's honest. And the production values are incredible. Like, what you're doing is really amazing. And I, I got to tell you, it's a blessing to me, a big blessing. And I just thank you for all that you do and all the work you put into this. So, so thanks, man. Thanks. Glad that you appreciate it and like it. And the authors and well the different authors and the um artists of the remnant. I get one or two messages and one is time to time um a email. Like Don Don sent me an email beforehand, like long, long, long beforehand with um with distant on the issue zero on a sneak peek and I'm like, I finally finally got a wrong tail last week. So Bill, is there anything <laughs> anything else you wanna add? Something you think I should have asked or just where, where could people find you as well? And keep up with the remnant. They can find me on Facebook. Um, our group is Grok Comics Universe on Facebook. We're on Twitter, Grok Comics. Instagram, Grok Comics. Um, threads, Grok Comics. And our website is grokcomics.com. So thank you for everyone who watches the videos and who purchases the books. And for those of you who can't, those of you who just give Words of encouragement, it's always appreciated. Well, well, guys, that is, you heard it from the, as, as um, Ernest says, because Ernest is like, Ernest is another top commenter, but he is, he loves your stuff, and Evan David's stuff and everything, and he says, you heard it from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Bill Rob, creator of uh, the remnant that I like to dub as the, Christian Justice League, even though I also put the caveat that it is nothing like, even though it is like probably <laughs> inspiration pulled from, I just do it for clickbait. <laughs> really, really and true. Right. Like I'm trying to get any Christian. I love, your, I love your clickbait titles, by the way. Yeah. I <laughs> love it. And it's good clickbait. The YouTube gurus and they talk about good clickbait. Good clickbait is when <laughs> the person is clickbaited into it, but the clickbait aligns with the video. So it's good clickbait. 
it's not right. bad clickbait <laughs> where I'm like, check out this. Like, I think the last I've been getting I've been getting extra creative in comic titles. <laughs> I think the last one <laughs> for the Sithano was like, um, hero hero frame for murder for Luciferian cults. Um, kill yeah. falling in Luciferian cults kidnapping plan. <laughs> Oh, and for the record, <laughs> Parables number eight, uh, which is the spotlight on anarchy, Throck does not All right, see anybody yeah. to yes, hell. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's a good thing you should have added, too. I was like, we well, gotta... Because even if you play the comment section, they were like, oh. And like, Ernest, I get Ernest, uh, Ernest who called it the man with the legend. He made a comment saying... Well, this changes everything for me on what what's Grok's superpower. It's like, and I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> we need some explanation, Bill. <laughs> and yeah, man, like it's like it's been awesome. Covering the Remnant comics has been awesome. I felt like when I found the Remnant, it was an answered prayer for me personally, and a show for many. And I continue to encourage you with what you do with the Remnant, and to all. The other, the, all the creatives in the remnant and the Christian create, just the God-fearing creatives outside of, uh, outside of the remnant, like Evan David and just all the other creatives that we cover on the channel, like you guys are doing. I know right now it may seem like bleak in some instances, as you see, stuff kind of in the red, but I believe that once you stay the course with God and the instructions and the vision that He has given to you it would be well worth it especially if it's aligned amen. to his perfect will yeah bull? amen so with that guys thanks for listening to this installment of the kiddushim initiative podcast our very first part our very first interview with none other than bill rob we would have him on again in the future of course because we can't we have to keep you keep sending the cover, you keep sending the questions, and we would keep pelting those bones that you pelt at me at him. So <laughs> that's <laughs> it. So guys, be sure to follow us on all socials to keep up with our with the Christian creative reviews. You can find us on everything at the explanations and our website at the explanations.com. That's it for me, and thanks for listening and watching. And God bless. Do enjoy the rest of your day night evening whenever you see this bye <laughs> yeah that was awesome